everyone. I'm Derek from Crowd Eddie Magazine, and I'm sitting here with Laura Jansen, who just wrapped up a great set for us. And she was nice enough to stick around and answer some of our questions. Um, so welcome. Thanks. And thanks. Uh, I guess we get started for those of people out there that are just discovering your material. If you could maybe give us a little background on how you came to came to music where, sure. when you started, or if you came from like maybe a musical family, or sure. a little background. I'm uh, half American, half Dutch, so I was kind of shuffled between Holland and America my whole life. And the constant in my life is always the piano in the house. Um, I've kind of been obsessed with piano since I was about three, and really classically trained, and um, wasn't good enough to be a classical piano player, but always loved music. My mom raised me on Queen and Brazilian folk music and a lot of vinyl and um, a lot of rock and roll in my house. So it was really encouraged. And um, I always played music, but never wrote. And I didn't come to writing until a couple years ago. Uh, started writing, um, moved out to Los Angeles, uh, became part of the Hotel Cafe community, which is a really special group of musicians out in right. LA that cool. really inspiring place. And I've been in Europe for the past two years um, touring um, music and l learning the ropes. And, you know, it's going pretty cool. It's going okay. Yeah. Well, I, uh, so I assume I me mean, going back and forth and traveling a lot uh, through Europe when you were younger, has that kind of travel and that exposure to different music scenes influenced your sound at all? Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's influenced me as a human. And um, it's made the world a really manageable place you know it's mm -hmm. not it doesn't seem impossible to me to, to 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 do this for the rest of my life I would like to do that and yeah I get inspired daily by by the travel and um there's such a different scene over there of music too that it seems to be really separate the U.S. scene and the European scene and um it's really interesting there's a lot of talent walking around over there too I'm kind of speaking of that your album Bells uh comes out in the States on March 22nd yeah I'll be sure to check it out. Um, but it's been out for a couple of years, right, in the Netherlands? It's been out about a year and four months, something like that. It came out um, It came out over there, like, really unassumingly. <laughs> it was really, like, But it's really, uh, from what I understand, it really caught on. Yeah, it did really well over there. Is it is weird amazing. for you to go from having that kind of established um, fan base and then kind of starting from scratch over here? And, you know, I mean, these songs have been with you for a while now, and yeah. you're, people are hearing them here for the first time. Yeah. Is that... Is that, what was that like for you? Or is, are, do, you, do you come to your performances now in a different way than you did when you first started playing songs? Absolutely, like yeah. I mean, I think the the year and a half of, of growth in Europe and how you know the experiences over there to me are much more crazy uh, and far scarier than the idea of starting over. I mean, I'm used to starting over and used to playing for smaller crowds. And what happened in Europe was kind of a, was kind of a fairy tale year this year. Um, and that's surreal to me. Um, so coming back to like a smaller venue and having to really work to convince five people to stay when they hear your first song. And um, I like that challenge. And the songs are still really fresh for me. And um, I love playing them. I'm really proud of them. So um, I'm just really looking forward to like, you know, finding a new audience here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned the hotel cafe yeah. and kind of moving to L.A. And um, I wonder, I mean, for people that aren't familiar with that scene, and that venue and that whole community, if you could kind of let us know how you came to be involved sure. in that and yeah. what it's all about. It's this really tiny bar in Hollywood in an alley. There's no sign on the door. It holds about 200 people. And it's been around for about 15 years, about 10 years as a singer-songwriter venue. It's one of the few places in L.A. where ego is not appreciated and competition is refreshing. frowned upon. It's very refreshing. <laughs> I don't think I would stay in LA if that place didn't exist. And I knew about it before I actually moved to, to LA um, because I was listening to music coming out of that venue. It's a little similar to what was happening in the 70s in New York City where artists you know, collaborated and used each other's talents instead of com competing for the spotlight. And um, it really, it became this really organic group of musicians that just grew and grew and grew. And then a couple of the people that were in that group became really successful. Um, it's bizarre that like Katy Perry started there, which is yeah. totally bizarre because she's, she's a really quite an established songwriter before she was a, you know, like a pop star. She was a songwriter. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. And John Mayer started there and um, Jason Mraz and Sarah Bareilles and Ingrid Michaelson. And Joshua Radin, who you're Joshua Radin. touring with right now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Cool. And that's actually how we know each other is through that place. So when I moved to L.A., I would sit in the corner of the bar 
for about a year every night and just watch <laughs> <Hoping>. people. <laughs> well, and just realizing I needed to go back to the drawing board work, yeah. and like <laughs> raise the bar a little for myself. And after about a year, I got my first gig and, you know, 10 people showed up and that wasn't good. And, um, but slowly got like a monthly gig there and um, got to know the, the community. And uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, I owe everything to it. So did you start in LA and then go kind of go back to the Netherlands? And yeah. Release the rec- okay. Cool. Yeah, it was weird because, I mean, it wasn't my plan to go, you know, go, go back home. Um, but through YouTube and the internet, my music, you know, caught on. caught on over there. And then I got a phone call and they said, can you come, you know, come take some meetings and play some shows. And, cool. and that was just, yeah, that kind of changed everything. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I'm also curious about your kind of songwriting process sure. and, um, wondering kind of if things that you pull from are autobiographical or more observational, um, like say a song which you played for us, single girls, if mm-hmm. that's. Completely autobiographical. (laughs) I mean, like, embarrassingly so. I'm not yet the kind of writer that that can write about uh, the world outside of me. I'm still trying to figure out my own crap. (laughs) My own life is so, to me, it's so, you know, worth analyzing to learn from. And so, yeah, every song on my record is... um, is a chapter of my life and single girls. I wrote that literally like a week after the worst heartbreak, you know, that I've yet experienced. And, um, been there. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> it's interesting cause I just, I mean, I wasn't thinking about writing a song for, uh, a record. I was trying to get through a week. So it's more of a, it's a cathartic kind of thing. Totally. It was just a list of stuff I was doing to get through it. And, um, it's funny how universal those things ended up being because when I put the song out, the reaction I got from women and from men was, you know, like it didn't make me feel very special because everybody, <laughs> everybody goes through that. And yeah, but I mean, it's music like that that helps people get but through But that's it. what's so beautiful about yeah. music is like you can find that universal experience and it makes me feel less alone. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a song that, that came out pretty, pretty naturally and the, they all are. They're about relationships and the process of breaking up and healing from it and and also, you know, what I'm trying to figure out as a human being. There's yeah. always another chapter, right? There's always, <laughs> always. Uh, but in addition to your own stuff, you, uh, I noticed that the, your cover of Kings of Leon, you, somebody else, have caught on pretty Yeah, big. that's been crazy. Is, uh, <laughs> it, is there a story nuts. behind how you got, how you, what made you decide to cover that? Yeah. Or, oh, there, okay. I was Did in Holland, like my first radio show ever. I'd never done radio before, and I was invited to do this morning radio show sort of with the Howard Stern of Holland like the scariest, most intimidating guy's guy DJ. And he um, he asks artists to, to play one of their own songs as well as a song from the charts. And everything in the chart was like Euro dance, you know, <laughs> techno, bad. And there was this song, and I, I loved this song. I mean, the Kings of Leon are a very talented group of guys, but this song in particular is like kind of a classic song already. And when you take out all the rock and roll, which is what I'm really good at doing, taking out the rock and roll. Um, it becomes this really anthemic song about um, isolation and uh, needing human contact. And and so I played it on the air, and the reaction was so strong that we p- kept playing it live. And then... Mix it on the record, right? Yeah. Cool. And then we went back in the studio, recorded it, and that song just took off. It sort of have, has its own life on the internet now. And Yeah, it was, it's a cover that's done the way a cover should be done, which is oh, kind of your thanks. own interpretation rather than just copying. So it's, it's, yeah, it's really it's, good. Yeah, it's a really different take on the song, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And then I also would like to ask you about, because I found that your, your music videos are really cool, like very creative oh, and kind of capture this kind of whimsy and playfulness that's mm-hmm. a nice foil to the lyrics and the music. Good. Do you, I mean, what's the creative process like for your music videos? Well, that's the beauty of the internet. I met my director, Brooke Hansen, who's brilliant. Has she done all the, like, the She's done ones? two of the three, yeah. yeah. Um, she contacted me on MySpace years ago, and she was graduating from film school and, you know, wanted to do a graduate project. And I had no money and she had no money, but we had friends who were talented and we put together a video, um, on, I think, you know, a thousand dollars or something, but just months of work and building our own sets and stop motion stuff. And she's just such a creative director and, um, really gets what I'm trying to do. Um, so I'm really proud of her. I think she's sort of the brain behind it. Yeah, well, they're really cool. Yeah, Definitely thanks. check those yeah, out, too. Yeah, she's we'll great. Post a couple. Um, cool. I guess 
to wrap things up, I'm curious, are you going to be at South by Southwest this year? Yeah, South by Southwest is going to be, this is the first year I'm doing it with a record. I'm promoting a record. So you've I've, been before. I've been before, but it's always been kind of a party and a reunion and seeing friends. And this is the first time I'm really like working it and uh, playing like nine shows or something crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. we'll be yeah. down there. So we'll check cool. it out. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to get together. Well, great. Thanks for Thanks. stopping by. It was great. We're on uh, Laura Jansen. Check out the record Bells out on March 22nd and make sure to watch the rest of the session that we'll post for you. Um, until then, see ya.